Well, children, where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think between the Negroes of the South and the women of the North all talking about rights, the white men will be in a fix pretty soon. Famously in 1851, she said before a convention of white women suffragists, ain't I a woman, talking about the black body as a debased body, generally understood to be masculine, whether uh, the person who encapsulated that body was a man or a woman. Women were not seen in their, their feminine traits, that, that she deserved to have doors held open for her, to, uh, to be subject to all of the polite respectability of the Victorian age. Uh, so she really challenged a lot of conventions at that messy intersection of race and gender uh, for the time period. But what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages, lifted over ditches, and to have the best place everywhere. Huh. Nobody ever helps me into carriages, or over mud puddles, or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Truth lectured on prejudice to Methodist children at the state Sabbath school convention in Battle Creek. Children, she said, who made your skin white? Was it God? Who made mine black? Was it not the same God? Thus, get rid of your prejudice and learn to love colored children that you may all be children of your Father in heaven. This concept of intersectionality was first given voice, I think, uh, famously by Sojourner Truth back in 1851. Sojourner Truth was an abolitionist and a feminist in a time where you could only be for one cause or another, not for both. Many of the feminists during Truth's time were white, and they usually made a point of separating race and gender issues. Some white feminists, like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Frances Willard, publicly denounced abolition so that women's rights would gain supporters. Sojourner Truth was one of the few who not only advocated both abolition and women's rights, but also linked the two issues into one, which she did in her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman? It was not, of course, her only speech on these subjects. Truth traveled across the country and became widely respected. In 1963, when Truth rose to give a speech, 500 persons were instantly on their feet, prepared to give the most earnest and respectful attention to her who was once but a slave. Her achievements paved the way for more African-American activists like Danny McLean, Majora Carter, and Kimberly Crenshaw. The word privilege. Privilege, of course, means a right of it or advantage afforded to some and not to others and at the expense of others. So for example, I have white privilege. I walk through the world and it is easier every single day because I am white and I am afforded certain societal rights and privileges that I did not earn. When Sojourner Truth stood to give her Ain't I a Woman speech, she wasn't aware that she was one of the first to voice a concept that hadn't even been coined yet. She was only making observations based on the fact that she was a black, formerly enslaved woman as a black woman, she faced more prejudice than white women. This was later termed as intersectionality, the interconnected nature of social categorization such as race, class, and gender as they apply to a given individual or group regarded as creating overlapping and interdependent systems of discrimination or disadvantage. Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman speech discussed this in detail. Truth says, then that little man in black there, he says women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches. Nobody ever helps me or gives me any best place and ain't I a woman. That last sentence, and ain't I a woman, is especially important. Truth is pointing out that while women have been denied their rights, African American women have faced even greater prejudice on counts of racism and sexism and therefore face injustice that white women do not. 
She draws attention to the fact that sexism affects each of us on different levels, whether it's not at all or much more than is usually brought attention to. And that, in a nutshell, is intersectionality. Intersectionality is hugely important when discussing privilege or prejudice in a society. It's a widely studied topic. Many academic works in the field of race and gender studies center around it, and it's common to see Sojourner Truth mentioned. However, those works rarely mention any of her other speeches, which elaborate on her viewpoints on race and gender relations. It's not just anti woman that paved the way for her fellow feminists, it's the impact of her life as a whole. Sojourner Truth was an extremely well-spoken and respected woman, and while she is mostly remembered for her one historic speech, her role of leader stretched across her lifetime. She spoke at multiple conventions, traveled across the country preaching her beliefs, and met with Abraham Lincoln. In her memoir, it is said that her speech had operated on the roused passions of the mob like oil on agitated waters. They were, as a whole, entirely subdued, and only clamored when she ceased to speak or sing. Her funeral was attended by reputedly 1,000 people. Truth was not just the leader for those five minutes during Ain't I a Woman. Her respected, but obviously less publicized, speeches on race, religion, gender, and the death penalty were all precursors to movements today. Those subjects, especially race and gender, were very hot topics during her time. The fact that she, as a black woman, gained so much attention and respect while lecturing against racism and sexism is astounding for her time, and she definitely led the way for African-American activists after her time. 